So next up, we have uh, Carla Swift, the new president of the Michigan AFL-CIO. Uh, she's the first woman, and um, it's been great to work with her. She led the We Are the People table um, earlier this year before she um, stepped into the, the shoes of being the leader of the labor movement in Michigan. So we are very glad to have her. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Amanda. And good morning. How's everybody doing? The room is starting to fill up, and uh, um, it's, a, it's a good looking crowd. Um, I'd like to start by um, setting the context uh, a little bit about what we're doing at the AFL in terms of some longer term priorities. Um, and, and there's really five priorities that we have looking forward to the future for, um, you know, the next maybe five years. Um, well, maybe not so long on this one, let's hope, but um, the jobs issue. We're going to claim the jobs issue. That is front and center to all the work that we're doing. Um, obviously, there's a crisis now, so, so we're going to um, drive hard on that. We're never going to stop driving hard on that, but, um, but, but it's a huge issue for us right now. Um, we also need to broaden the movement um, for working people. So yes, we have affiliates that have members that are union members, but the AFL and the labor movement in, 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 in Michigan um, always has and will continue to stand up for the interests of all working people, whether they belong to a labor union or not. And, and in order to do that, thank you. In order, in order to do that, we need to reach out and build um, stronger and deeper bridges with others in the community that share the same values um, that, that we have. So we're going to broaden the movement. We're going to look to um, align more directly with young people um, and, and with uh, a whole host of, of diverse groups uh, in the community. We need to reposition the movement. We need to talk less about unions and institutions, and we need to talk more about workers and families. And, um, and so you'll see us doing more of that. Um, we obviously need to organize. There's not enough of us in organized labor, and we, we need to bring in more. Um, and in the political arena, we need to blend our issue work with our electoral work so that we are creating year-round infrastructure and year-round accountability. So that's, that's the context uh, in, in, in which we're working um, at the Michigan AFL-CIO. When we asked this morning, um, when Art asked this morning, what do we love about Michigan and some very um, um, important things were raised and, and um, um, you know, so some of them sort of warm and, warm and fuzzy things and some of them, um, you know, just really important cultural and institutional things. Um, uh, one of the things that, um, that, that I love about Michigan, and I think a lot of us love about Michigan, is that we've always had good jobs. We've always had, uh, it's been a state known for um, a place where people can earn a living, they can um, buy a house, they can send their kids to college, they can retire with dignity, and that has been slipping away, obviously, over, over, over a, a number of years. And so, um, at, the, um, at the Michigan AFL-CIO and, and around the country in the labor movement, as I said, the jobs issue is, is, is front and center to our priorities. We have um, uh, embarked after 12 months in Michigan, after the 2011 legislature, um, we have embarked on an offense that is really two prong. <clears throat> One prong is the constitutional amendment to protect collective bargaining. And I hope that everybody in this room has signed. And um, if they haven't, there's a table over there where you can. <clears throat> and if you um, want to help out, that would be great too, because we are um, uh, we're doing a great job on on signature gathering. But we um, you know we want to. Um, keep running and keep pushing on this till we get to the to the filing deadline because what we're doing now is not just gathering to get on the ballot we are organizing now for an outcome a winning outcome in the fall so if everybody um, um, can uh, um, can share in that uh, in that project that would be great but after 12 months of attacks um, we're going on offense we're doing the collective bargaining constitutional amendment and in January the state AFL rolled out a jobs plan um, you can see it by going to the uh, AFL-CIO website, miaflcio.org. 
And, um, and I want to talk a little bit about that this morning because that is where the Michigan narrative and some very important work of the Michigan AFL-CIO intersect. Um, and, and the idea of the jobs plan was to um, provide a platform to contrast what had been going on in Lansing and what should be going on in Lansing. Instead of education cuts and taxes on pensions, we should be instead creating jobs. And, and, and we weren't seeing any uh, the kind of activity that we need there. And we need to hold our legislature accountable to do that. So if we could see the, the, first, the first slide. Is it up? Yep. Okay. So I think I'm just going to read. You already heard um, or saw the, the, uh, the Michigan narrative earlier. Um, and we incorporated the narrative throughout the jobs plan, but particularly in the intro and the conclusion of the jobs plan. So it starts off from the Motor City to the Upper Peninsula. Michigan hands, I can't see it. Michigan hands have made the things that have moved people and moved the world. Michigan built the American middle class by paying workers enough to buy the things we make. Michigan succeeded because we chose to think big. And the next slide. We must support the infrastructure, public services, people, and places that made it possible for us to be great and grow a vibrant middle class. Our schools, roads, and clean water systems are the foundation on which to create opportunities, drive innovation, and make Michigan great again. So that's sort of, or the, that's the bookends, if you will, of the Michigan Jobs Plan. And in the middle um, are calls for new policies uh, or, or um, uh, uh, recommitment to policies um, that, that we have left behind in the last year or so. Next slide. So the jobs plan, uh, we came together and we worked on it together, actually. And thanks to uh, David Holtz at Progress Michigan, Zach Pohl, who at the time was at uh, We Are the People, and a number of other allies. And in fact, uh, a number endorsed the jobs plan and stood with us when we rolled out the jobs plan in January. Um, Michigan Citizen Action, Michigan League for Human Services, Blue Green Alliance, Sierra Club, Clean Water Action, Progress Michigan, America Votes, and Michigan Voices. And it is a, um, it's a, it is a wonderful partnership and an opportunity for collaboration that um, is important <clears throat> to all of the shared values of, of the organizations that are there. And it was really a recognition in this jobs plan that we need to invest in the people, places, and public structures that make our state great. And it's a roadmap for creating the good jobs that pay fair wages and build an economy that works for everyone. The next slide. And there are five, um, uh, five priority areas, if you will, inside the jobs plan that we need to end the tax-supported outsourcing of Michigan jobs. We're sending far too many tax dollars out of state for work that could be done in state. We need to grow 21st century clean tech jobs. We need to invest in our schools and our kids' future. Everybody knows about that. We need to rebuild crumbling infrastructure and protect workers and middle class families. I'm not going to go into any details on that because my time is up. But I do want to just close by saying <clears throat> that it was not enough just to have a document and roll it out and have a press conference because that would be like having form with no substance. Our real goal is to actually get in legislation introduced that reflects these priorities that are spelled out in the jobs plan. And so <clears throat> this week, this Monday, we rolled out, or uh, I should say the legislature um, announced uh, uh, Representatives Bruner, um, Representative Hovey Wright, and give me the third one. I feel like this is a, um, um, a Rick Perry moment when I forget my third, <laughs> my third thing. Sorry. Apologies. However, um, we rolled out green to gold legislation, and we had press conferences in three places in the state, and the state representatives that were sponsoring, they, um, um, they, 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 lead, they led um, because they're introducing the legislation, but our friends at Sierra Club and Blue Green Alliance and Clean Water Action, again, stood with, with us there along with business people um, in the clean tech sector. So um, it's, a, it's, it's been a, a wonderful opportunity to work together and collaborate and bring some life to um, our values in Michigan. Thank you.